Um, also, so like I said, if you guys were teammates of mine and if we were working together, one of us would create the repository the first time, I would add the rest of you as collaborators, we would all clone it onto our old machines, and now we can start pushing back and forth. Um, so, maybe let's demo that a little bit. Here, who here has GitHub accounts? How many people's this demo got lost on? Okay. Um, are people logged into GitHub right now? Let me add a few of you guys as collaborators to this, and we will play with that. So start shouting out the usernames. Yeah, TC. Just up TC? Mm -hmm. This one here? Yeah. Bingo. Anyone else? Planning on this gig? Uh, sunshine and... Uh, sunshine <coughs> I need a... Uh, and... I N E A N. M. A N. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? D R I. A B W B. A B W B. Yep. Going once. G R E G. G R E G. G U Y L E S. G U Y. That's it. Once. Twice. U, U is H, H, E, N, and Y. I'm sorry, D, O, S, H. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, no, no. Not in the other country. It's M, E, L. M, M. M, E, L. No, from start. Okay. M, E, L. M, E, L? M, A, L. M, A, L? U, S. C, O, H. Uh, C-O-G. This yeah. one here? Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, you guys probably all just got emails. Uh, <laughs> because I had you, but why don't you, if you didn't get an email, you should just be able to navigate to this web address. So, go ahead and do that. And why don't you guys all clone read-write copies of my repo? So, either use HTTP or use SSH, but don't use the read-only one. So use one of these, go into a new folder on your computer, run git clone followed by the address listed here, and give a shout when you're done. And we'll see what happens when multiple people start making changes to this. Look at me when you guys are have a clone copy of the reason. And then CD into it. So you guys should essentially be, you know, right where I am right now in a folder called Git Demo somewhere right after you do the clone. What was the web address? Uh, so the web address is github slash a sailor, a y l e r slash git demo. And assuming I added your user correctly, you should have more than just this git read only. You should have either HTTP or SSH, use whichever one you want. Did you type my name correctly? No. <laughs> but I, I'm just kidding. No. FTC. You got it. You're in, right? Yeah. That's okay. Fun. Going once. So guys, I highly encourage the control shift C, control shift B, copy and paste in the terminal because you know typing shit like this by hand sucks. Are we good? Okay. So uh, let's start by just you guys don't do anything. I'm gonna add a file and you guys will pull my most recent change. So say we're working as a team, so I made some new file, right? Or, or let's just say I changed the README, right? So I'm gonna go into the README and I'm gonna go. Team. So I now need to do a git status, right? I need to do a git status. So I've changed the readme. I'm going to commit this change. I'm going to do it in one step. So I'm going to use the dash a dash m updated readme. Okay. Now there's one additional step, right? I've made my change. I've committed it, but this is all still local. So I need to sync my change against GitHub. So I can do that by running git push. Uh, by default, git push will push the branch I'm currently in 
to the remote I used most recently. So this is essentially the same as git push origin master, right? So I could type out the whole thing, and that would be a push to GitHub, but I can just do git push. So I'm going to do this push. It's going to push things up to GitHub. Swell. Okay? So now all of you guys should be able to go into your directory and do a git pull, and it should pull down this most recent change. And tell me if that's not true. All right. Okay. So now let's all edit the README file. So everyone open up the README file and let's force conflict. Uh, and everyone add a line. I don't care what line you add. This is going to be the most conflict I've ever had to deal with simultaneously. But it'll be fun. I promise. This is handy. It's fine. And then everyone race to commit and push them. And whoever gets in first is going to have the easiest job of it. So you all know committing is no problem. So committing happens locally. It doesn't matter what anyone else does. But now I'm going to try to push this, and assuming someone has beat me to the push. Oh, was I really the first one to push it? You still have to take it. Uh, you're killing me. So you guys all are going to get an error message as soon as I feel my demo. <laughs> as I'm on the projector. All right. Well, as soon as you guys try to push, someone's going to get a nice error message saying cannot push, right? Yeah. Play some refs to yes. OK, so what that means is something has changed here, and you're trying to push, but you don't have a copy of that change. So you need to do what's called, well, you need to do a couple of things. Uh, the first thing you need to do is basically pull in the changes. Uh, and this is going to cause, so that by itself may not be bad. If we had just edited separate files, this would be a really easy issue to resolve. You need to do a git pull to so bring you up to the most recent, but it will do what's called auto-merging, where it essentially, if it can auto-merge, so if you're all editing different files, it's easy to auto-merge, right? It's going to merge it all together, be no problem. So everyone start by doing a git pull. But your git pulls are probably going to give you another error, saying merge conflict or something like that, right? It would be way better if I were demoing it on the projector. Like, no, oh, you guys are all too slow. <laughs> or you could have just waited a little bit. I don't need a ton of time. <laughs> all right. So you guys now have what's called, um, let me need to come look up someone's computer because I don't know how to do this here. Or I can, can I force my own, uh, can't force my own merge conflict very easily. Okay, so. Or, well, you could edit the other problem you have. Yeah, but that's not synced with it. Okay. So you guys are saying automatic merge fail, fix conflict, and then mix results. So you'll notice it's telling you what file the merge conflicts are in. So if you open up that file, so just open it up in a text editor, you'll notice there's now some markup in it. This is what we call merge markup. So this markup is essentially showing you the difference between your change and the change you just pulled down. Um, Generally, this is pretty easy to resolve, right? You can figure out, so you're going to want to delete the lines that look funny. You, those are the markup lines, right? They're just there to tell you what part's your file and what part's the other file. So go ahead and delete those lines and make the file look like whatever you want. So what you probably want is my line next to your line somewhere. You guys can decide where you want it. Then go ahead and save the file. Um, now, if you do a git status, you'll notice it says you have an unmerged path. So both modified readme. So now that you've manually fixed this merge, right? So you opened up a text editor, you manually, you got rid of the markup, you manually merged together in whatever way is the human brain makes appropriate, right? Uh, now you can go ahead and do a git commit. So uh, or first you need to do a git add. So add whatever files have merge conflicts, then do a git commit. You fix it, be like fixed merge conflict. And now do a git push. And whoever wins, it's going to be easy again, and everyone else is going to have an issue. So this is because normally you wouldn't have this many merge conflicts simultaneously, right? But we're only <laughs> fixing them one at a time. So if he got to it first, you guys are all going to get another issue when you push now. But repeat the process. Do a poll. You'll now have my changes and his changes, and slowly one at a time we'll get to the point where you guys have merged in all the conflicts, right? This is, I promise you, the most painful merge you're ever going to have to do. <laughs> Normally it can resolve these things automatically, but at least you know how to deal with it. So get the whole, uh, 
Let's just get Paul to. Uh, yeah. So if you get a, if you do a push and it says cannot push because there's been changes here, do we get pull? Now sometimes that'll be the end of it. Sometimes you'll do a get pull and it'll be able to merge everything automatically. Um, that's not going to happen because we're editing the same part of the same file. Uh, if you're editing different files or if you're editing different parts of the same file, you're fine. But because we're all adding to like the last line, it doesn't know who should win. So you guys are going to have this iteration of merge conflicts. Fix them one at a time. Eventually, you'll get to the point where you can actually do a push again. I don't seem to be getting the um, mark up anymore. It just says pull is not possible because you have Oh, so you have to, so you still have to merge your previous, so you still have to uh, commit your previous change. Do we get status? It's always do we get status if you say like that, I'll tell you what's up. Okay, so you fixed README, but you did, you need to add and commit it. So do we get add README and then we get commit? And yeah, you can do like fixed merge changes or something. Yeah. Cool. Now try to get push. And you're going to get an error, right? Yeah. So now do we get full and repeat the whole process? So the gist is you will run git push. If git push fails, you're then going to run git pull. If the auto merge fails, you need to edit conflicts manually. Then you need to do a get app with whatever file was conflicting. This could be more than one, too, if you have multiple conflicts, multiple files. Then you do a get commit. Then you finally get to try your get push again. And repeat. <laughs> Sorry for making this painful, guys. Did someone get a push through? Yeah. Okay. So I should be able to do a get pull now and start pulling in new changes. Cool. So now if I look at my readme, let's see. Okay. So we're making progress. Although someone committed a cardinal error and you push mark, you push merge markup. Delete these. So these are just the auto-generated merge markup files. What these tell you, I mean I guess this is good, but what this is telling me is it's saying that in my head, so in my branch, uh, this is new, and uh, this is what exists in my branch, this is what's been added. So if I want to deal with this, I should delete. So I'm going to delete these lines that look like this, 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 and just leave your guys' lines. Okay, so. Now I can keep up with this way. We can keep fighting this process too, right? So people shouldn't be adding new things. Just get to the point where you've merged in everyone's changes. All right. Anyway, though, we could play this game all day. Um, so we'll notice that after I commit something, now that I'm using GitHub, it's going to say my branch is ahead of origin master by one commit. So this is telling me I've done a commit but not a push. So it's easy, the one downside of this is it's easy to make a bunch of changes, do commits and think you're done, and you are done locally. But if you forget to push, you're not going to be able to sync those changes on another computer, right? I mean, I've done this before and I have to like, drive back to the lab so I can push my changes so I can actually go home and work on them, right? It just, it sucks if you forget to push. So if you see this, it just means you have a push pending. Do a git push, it'll take care of itself. Some mine's probably gonna fail. And now I'm in this boat with you guys. This is also why when you're working with a team with Git, yes, it only gives you tools to resolve all of this, but this is a pain in the ass, right? You tend to coordinate with your team such that you're not all 10 trying to edit the same part of the same file, right? You say, I'm gonna be working on this file, you go work on this file, or I'm gonna be working on this function. Like you can even within one file, you're fine as long as you're modifying distinctly different parts of the file. Then Git can do what's called auto-merging, where it can just, you know, figures out each person's changes and put them together. So this is not as normal, it's not that normal. We don't normally have errors like this. So I can go and fix these merge conflicts now. Seemed like a good idea at the time, guys. <laughs> <laughs> at least those are the time.
So eventually we're going to get to one file that everyone has a unique view of. So questions on pushing, pulling, merge conflicts. Uh, the merge conflicts are actually the rarity. I'm glad you all know how to deal with them because a lot of people don't because they actually don't happen that often. Um, but if they do happen, yeah, you need to manually fix things up before you complete your push. But this would essentially allow us, we can now working as a team, right? We can keep all of our code synced. And not only are we keeping it synced, because you can keep it synced on Dropbox, but we're keeping it synced with a nice log of who did exactly what 